Gary, with regard to the school bombing, the school bomb threats, on Friday, the Prime Minister, the Family Day yesterday, seemed to suggest or link it to the UNC vote of no confidence in mm. Fitzgerald Hines. What's your take? Uh, gentlemen, you'll have to um, call me on, on my phone. Now, I don't know if you're hearing me. Um, I picked up a little bit of it. Um, the, I do have to agree for once with the Prime Minister to the extent that um, in total contrast to the statement by the Minister of National Security, where he tried to trivialize it, which is what he does all the time it, because of his inability to try to explain the situation and what he intends to do to rectify it, where he tries to trivialize it in the same manner when they had the situation with the, the, the shooting and the children. He said that the children were not in danger um, when, it, when they were lying flat on the floor. And in this situation, this was well orchestrated. Um, when you're speaking about trying to get data and information pertaining to dozens of different schools, and at, that is why I made the statement that in total contrast. Oh, we lost him again. Okay, he's gone, he's gone completely. Because, because of political because affiliation. Actually... If, this person, if these persons are charged, if they are held and charged, they will be charged under the Anti-Terrorism Act. So how could you be charged under the Anti-Terrorism Act, but it's not seen as an act of terror? Hmm. So, so you are saying you are saying you are, you agree with the prime minister Hello? that that it might be linked Hello? to the to the UNC's no confidence motion? Is that what you're saying, Hello? Gary? Oh no! Hello. Hello. Steve, Steve. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get I'm Steve on the phone. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes, yeah, so you, you were saying it? Uh, are you saying you agree with the Prime Minister that, that it's probably linked to the motion of no confidence? Oh, no, not at all. Um, to, to just the opposite. What I'm saying is that it was well orchestrated. Nothing to do with the opposition. Listen, if West Indies lose a test match, Kit Rowley will blame the opposition. If it is that, that rain falls, he blames the opposition. I mean, it's getting ridiculous now. It is very petty. And then what happens, as you would have seen, Wendell, any comment that he makes, um, you'll have people like Train Seals and Sea will clapping and applauding, and they will be blindly in support of it. On what grounds can you justify that it is linked to that? You can't. But what you're trying to do is, again, dog whistle to give the impression that this was something politically motivated and orchestrated by those persons opposed to the PNM. It is childish. It is unpatriotic. Uh, it holds no substance. But that is the one good thing with the PNM, you know. When it is, you, you see the same lie over and over, whether it is email gate, whether it is firearm audit, you see the same lie over and over and hope that the blind loyalists will blindly support it. There's no justification for something like that. Um, I, again, we must work on facts. What I am saying is that this was well orchestrated because it was designed, to, this is not just a random situation where you just picked up one or two schools and you, you made, a, um, and you made uh, these, these prank calls. But to try to get the information, it meant that there was some degree of organization made. And that is what I'm speaking about. But to just automatically always accuse anyone politically opposed to Keith Rowley as being the be-all and end-all of all that is, that is evil. I mean, it is really childish, but that's, again, that, that's the mantra of Keith Rowley. So, 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 what, so what then would you suggest was behind that email that went out to all the schools in, in Trinidad and Tobago? What do you what do you think was was behind it? If not, if it's not really, um, try to explain or, or understand the logic behind persons who with, with evil intent. It could be based on testing systems. It could be based on just being mischievous. Um, it could be based on just trying to destabilize a country. Uh, many different factors. Trying to find the perpetrators should be the main goal. It makes it very difficult when it is that the PNM continues to dismantle elements that were put in place to deal with this in the uh, in the commission of inquiry into the attempted coup in 1990 the main thing that they spoke about to prevent any act of further act of terrorism in Trinidad and Tobago was the setting up of the National Operations Center. It was shut down by the by Keith Rowley. Uh, and that operation center was to ensure coordination, collaboration, and communication. Communication not just between the arms of the protective services, but to pass it on to the members of the public. You shut it down because it, it was a Gary Griffith or Kamala initiative. You, you shut down the, the system of the operational command center that we had. You shut down the national security alert state that we had. And all of these things played a very 
very big can play a big part towards minimizing fear and properly pinpointing the perpetrators and to ensure that the, there's a, there's proper collaboration between different arms of the protective services. But this is what happens with Keith Rowley when you try to politicize national security. Uh, so it becomes very difficult for the law enforcement agencies to work properly if they operate in silos. But this has happened because of the shutting and dismantling of things that were put in place specifically for such a situation. The cyber, the cyber crime unit, are they equipped enough to um, deal with this situation by themselves or will they need to reach out to international partners in terms of getting down to who sent those emails? Well, it, it, it can very well work. We don't know if it is that these persons were amateurs, they, um, it can be dealt with. But I've heard people trying to criticize our cybercrime unit. They are very good. Um, they have the type of technology. Um, if it is that that international support is required, fair enough. But uh, I, I would ask the public to just not, not, not try to... Um, to, to point fingers at the cybercrime unit. Sometimes these things could come from a 13-year-old child in Serbia that just sent something just being very mischievous. These things are very technical. It, um, but let us just let the authorities do their work. But what I think, as I said, I want to re-emphasize re it is unfortunate that you will shut down and dismantle specific things that would have been beneficial to assist the agencies in pinpointing the perpetrators. How soon, um, I mean, obviously, to prevent something like this happening again, you would need to make sure that people can be held accountable for it so that, so, so that it prevents future acts because you would know, okay, you will be caught um, if you were to use that methodology. How confident are you that it, the, the perpetrators of this act are going to be caught? Well, um, not very, because as I said, there were a number of them. When it is, remember when we had kidnappings, we never had a situation with kidnappings before where the kidnappers were actually being held. But because of the type of technology that I acquired for the Trans Tobago Police Service, from access into the dark web, from pinpointing certain things that can be used through, through mobile phones, messages, and so forth. It was the first time Trinidad and Tobago started seeing kidnappers being, uh, uh, raids being um, taking place whilst the kidnappers were holding the victims and the kidnappers were arrested. That is what put an end to kidnapping in Trinidad and Tobago because of the type of technology that I was utilizing and the kidnappers didn't know where we were coming from. That is why in that period when I was commissioner, the kidnappings became non-existent, home invasions and all of these things because the criminal elements realized, wait, I don't know what is happening now. That's where the, a few moments later kicked in because there was technology that we had that made it easier for us to be able to pinpoint the perpetrators and to pinpoint exactly where they are and what they are doing. Unfortunately, after I left, thanks to Mr. Jacob, I don't know whether it was based on instructions again. So, so are you suggesting that that... Yeah, hello? I lost you there. Am I suggesting? Are, are you suggesting that the technology no longer exists? Yeah, no, that the technology no longer exists. Um, so that is why you're starting to hear kidnappings and home invasions and all of this. Several of the type of technology, the type of technology that I was utilizing, was shut down because it was told this is a Gary Griffith thing, and that is, and the, the, the data is there. You'll recall several kidnappings where we were actually apprehended the kidnappers whilst they were in, um, holding the victims. That was that never took place before in this country. Home invasions, you, you raid a home, and within two or three minutes, a police vehicle will be there because that type of technology assisted us in what is known as predictive policing, and it's the, and it's the same type of technology that, would, that could and would Instead, the agencies in pinpointing the perpetrators in this aspect. But again, keep wrong. Sometimes when you see here, but, but, this but Gary, but Gary, of doing what is right, the technology is there. The Gary, the the, it's kind of preposterous. Plug and everything because it is not a PNM thing. And who's suffering now? The country. When did you have a well, it's kind of preposterous to, to suggest that the police would shut down something like that because it's a Gary Griffith thing. It's kind of preposterous but, but, to, to but, suggest that. That is what happened. I just gave you the names. The National Operations Center, the Operational Command Center, the dark web, all these systems. Oh, it is, but I just told you it's not preposterous. It happened. I am just, I'm just, the National Operations Center is no more. It is not being used for what it was designed for. The Operational Command Center, the Commissioner's Command Center, the GPS tracking on the police vehicles, the technology that we were using towards pinpointing and monitoring things in the dark web and dealing with predictive policing. It happened. 
and that is and that is why it is not coincidental that in my, under my watch it was the people felt safe and it was 342 murders in my last year and now it's over 600 that is not coincidental Wendell these are facts If you do, you, do you recall as well over 23 people were also fired by Mr. Jacob? F several of them were also instrumental in that type of technology that was being used to assist us in, in this type of investigation. But, but, that, but that's, that's akin, that's akin to, to shooting yourself in your own foot. I mean, I can't even... I mean, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you, but I, 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 I refuse to believe that the police service, our state, would stop technology like that. Yeah, but Wendell, that is what happened. Look at the walkthroughs to the scanners. We had the scanners to be able to pin, um, to, to use on the ports, to be able to pinpoint and target um, illegal weapons. They pull the plug on that as well. And so, but you see, this is what happens where politicians get involved and they realize, look, if we use this equipment, we use, just look at the St. James Barracks. We have a hockey turf, an astro turf, and it, they refuse to use it because Gary Griffith built it. And, and because of that, hockey has been dead for two years. And that is the only artificial turf in the country. That is what happens when we play politics and it affects the country. So, I mean, you, you have heard it from 2010 <clears throat> when the government changed. The PNM complained about it with the OPVs and so on and so forth. But 2015, it was the same thing. <clears throat> because when it is that, as minister, when I set up the National Security Special Operations Group, the National Operations Center, the Energy Sector Security Initiative, um, the E999 system, the Rapid Response Unit, the Security Training Academy, the PNM shut down everything. And then when I left as Commissioner of Police, um, the, from the Emergency Response Patrol, the NOC, the Operational Command Center, the Dark Web, the Technology, all of these things were also shut down as soon as I left. It is petty politics because you figure, look, he's no longer there, they are no longer there, shut it down because it will make them look good. And that is, the, that is what we have to endure. Look at the diamond vessels. I acquired diamond vessels that cost $1.2 billion less than the defective OPVs. They refused to touch it for seven years and then acquired hostile vessels to do the exact thing that the diamond vessels could have done. That is petty politics, gentlemen. Are the diamond vessels still in use? No, they parked there. Anybody who goes down the islands, you'll see it parked up there as an ornament in Stobles because they refused to use it because the PNM did not purchase it. That is, and that is what kills the country. So when you have a prime minister going up on a platform, making ludicrous statements about um, you do not want to work with Kamala and Gary because of, um, I don't want to work with people who may commit crime. I want him to clarify the comment. He's, is he trying to say that Kamala, Pasad Bissessa, and Gary Griffith are criminals? He also made, <clears throat> and again, trying to refuse to work together. When it is you have a situation as a leader and you decide to put petty politics be before what is right for the country, you, it means that you rather see the nation drunk in blood than to swallow your pride because your ego and your arrogance and your hatred and your bitterness takes priority. That cannot be right. And you can't be using cheap excuses. He made a statement and said, I have good grounds not to meet with Gary Griffith. Gentlemen, up to now, Keith Rowley, do not be a coward. Stand firm. There's a saying you can't be half pregnant. If you have good grounds, say what it is. But I don't hide like a coward in parliament that you're trying to do with the audit and the court chasing like a dog until you can't do it. Say it in outside parliament and give your grounds. There's no grounds. There's no justification. But it is what happens when it is, I see, I see hate, I see bitterness, I see a man totally out of control when he cannot have his way. So you rather see the country drawn in blood because you do not like Gary Griffith or Kamala Prasad Bissessa. And you have PNM people clapping like train steels in SeaWorld in Toko yesterday, applauding this. That is amazing, Wendell. And the, and the same Keith Rowley, if he changes his mind tomorrow, the same people will clap and say, yes, I agree with you. Trinidad and Tobago citizens, we must stand up and have a mind of our own. You cannot just be blinded that a political leader will say left and you go left. You change your mind next year and say right, you go right. Uh, that Gary, is what in this yeah. country, blind yeah. political loyalty. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, okay. I mean... I hear your perspective and your perspective. I mean, you have made clear before. So I don't want to um, re-navigate that issue. I, I, but um, from a general political stance, Trinidad Tobago has had this problem that when administrations change, the incoming administration sometimes discontinues projects that the, the population generally thinks that they, this, pop, this particular project has value. But the incoming administration changes, and and it's not a PNM thing. 
it's uh Trinidad political, Trinidad and Tobago political thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I know for a lot of citizens, it's like we are bewildered why that happens. And be, because ultimately for the country to move forward, there has to be a plan that is that everybody agrees on on some level or general consensus on certain key points of where the country is moving forward so that no, no matter who gets into power, there is a trajectory that, that the main political parties have agreed on. They may tweak in different directions, but you know, this is where we are going. How, uh, speaking to you now as the leader of the NTA, what's your perspective on, 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 on Trinidad and Tobago politics in that regard? Well, well, definitely hit the nail on the head. On the head, I mean, again, I will continue to say that I will continue to be a patriot before being a politician, and that is what I did as the Minister of National Security. I saw the value in the OPVs. Yes, granted that the three OPVs. If you type BAE slash corruption, you will find seventeen countries that took BAE to court for paying kickback to government officials. So the cost of the BAE was eight hundred million for each vessel. We were getting it for four hundred million from um, Korea, Israel, and Colombia. But the, but the point is, I realized the value of what Patrick Manning was doing with the, with the OPVs, and that's why I acquired the Diamond Vessel for $1.2 billion less. You know why? Because I took out the corruptive aspect of it, but I saw the value. Likewise with SORT, the Special Anti-Crime Unit, I saw the value of SORT. That is why when I became the Commissioner of Police, it was not accidental that I named the unit the Special Operation Response Team, SORT. So that is where I am different. I will ensure that if I see something that is good from the PNM, the UNC, the AB, you see the XYZ. My job is to win. I play to win. I don't play the politics. And when you play the politics, you lose. The country will lose. And that is why when I operated as the minister, it was not coincidental. It was the highest, it was the lowest number of serious crime in 31 years. When I was a commissioner of police, it was the highest reduction in violent crime in 25 years because I play to win. I, and I, my winning is not by playing politics with national security, but we continue to do so because we are blinded so much. So much we get blinded. Minded by this person is on the other side of the fence. Look at what Keith Rowley is doing right now. This I don't. I don't want you to go back on that road. You're you're the you're the you're you're right that you know, you know, right that so petty, so bitter. You're saying I don't want to meet with them. That is where arrogance comes in because of hatred for political opponents takes precedence over doing what is right for the country. The enemy could not be seen and must never be seen as your political opponents. The enemy are those who deprive the law-abiding citizens of their constitutional right to safety and security and that is how i will continue to operate all right well gary this is where we have to leave it this morning um i want to thank you for spending some time with us this morning my pleasure take care all right. all the best